Well, uh, one thing we were, uh, I don't know if you've ever talked about this, probably not on a podcast, but is how <laughs> you and Conan met. Mm -hmm. And um, it was all sort of memorialized on video, little snippets of video. And in your memory, Mike Sweeney. That's right. I was there. there. Sweeney I was, was there. there. Yes, he was. So I am, I'm the objective third party who mm -hmm. saw everything. You're the eye of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back in the, the late 1990s, you know, Conan, I had Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Show was on at 1235 everywhere, except for some reason in Houston, Texas, the show at first came on at 2.40, 2.40 in the morning. They would show reruns of like Ricky Lake and, and all these other shows, Entertainment Tonight, anything to put off the Conan show coming on. It came on at 2.40. And then I think in the year 2000, it got moved up to 2.10 a.m., <laughs> which was a, like a giant half hour victory. And uh, to celebrate, Conan was looking at like, oh, let's see who our advertisers are on our show at 2.10 a.m. in Houston. And it was, you know, there were a lot of great low-budget commercials going on at that time, including there were two commercials for different furniture companies. And uh, <laughs> Conan had a contest to see, ask our fans, which one of these commercial uh, sponsors do you like the best? And everyone loved this guy named Hilton because he did an ad with a chainsaw and he, he would just tear up the, the furniture with a chainsaw. So Conan, uh, we, we had the idea to bring him to New York and give him an advertising makeover because his ads needed, could use some sprucing up. And I was, I was running this remote and I had to pick an advertising agency and I had a list I, of the top advertising agencies in New York and one of them was Footcomb and Belding. And I don't know how we zeroed in on Footcomb and Belding, but that's where we decided to go. We went with Hilton. It was an act of God. It was an act of God and Conan. <laughs> and uh, you, Liza, were one of the creative people that we interviewed about how to make a new commercial for Hilton. Yes, I was. Yes. So how did how did that happen? Like, how did you get to be part of the team that, was going to be part of this late night remote segment. Do you remember? Yes, I do remember. And what I love about this is that, you know, when you're married or you're a couple, people will say, like, how did you meet? Right. And I love this whole story. And so I would always go, okay, so the affiliate in Houston and Cone would be like, <laughs> just <laughs> stop it. Just get to, like, do a summary, overview. Um <laughs> <laughs> but so I really, um, we're, you know, and we're mucking around in my favorite weeds right now. But uh, I, on a Friday afternoon, was called into my creative director's office. I was a copywriter. And he said, and I think my partner, Jen, came in with me and they said, and maybe a couple of other people, and they said, you need to come in at nine on Monday morning. And we were like, what? Because creative people don't come in till 10. Why are you calling us in early? What is this? And they said, we can't tell you what it's for. And then someone said they heard an, a rumor that it had to do with a mattress store who was an, like a client and something to do with the Conan O'Brien show. And mm -hmm. so we all went home for the weekend worrying about how we would be mocked on national television, basically. And so we came in uh, Monday morning not knowing anything about what was going to happen. And they put us in this room and we waited for you guys to show up. And yeah. I, I think, I don't know, you were not there at 9 a.m., but... Um, no way. <laughs> no yeah. way. No. Um, so I'm not sure what we that was all about. We showed up at 10 a.m. at our office. Yes. And he was really sick that day. He, he like had a bad cold and so he was grumpy and didn't want to be doing a remote and didn't want to be there, you know, early on a Monday morning. And um, so... He being... Conan. Me. No, he yes. being Conan. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, right. Um, the capital H. Sorry, you couldn't hear oh, the I don't, capital I don't remember. H I don't remember that. Oh, you don't? Yeah. Because he, he's no. always grumpy. I'm yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> That's right. It didn't distinguish it for you. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, and it's hard to know what 
part of my memory of the event is the video of the event. You know, right. it's blended over time. Um, right. But I remember we were all in a in a in a corner office, and um, you guys were telling us what was going to happen, and. And I also remember being out in like the reception area wearing safety goggles and and this part's in the remote and 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 Hilton is carving up furniture with his chainsaw right there. And um so Right. I I don't know if we I guess we brought that chair. I don't know if we brought that chair or just found said, one. Hey, we'll pay you back. Probably. Yeah, you was probably chair. the latter. You <laughs> yeah, and then you the never ladder. paid them back. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, you know why he's probably also cranky is because it was a show day uh-huh. and shooting a remote on the same say. day where then he's got to go back and prepare for that night show mm-hmm. was a real, it was a drag. Mm-hmm. It was like an extra imposition. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that I remember because I remember when we were done, it was around noon and that's really late to be wrapping up a pre-tape and get back to do the show that day. But he was not in a rush to get out of the room. No, he was not. I think we know why that is. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Right. So, yeah. So we, there were like five people, I think, on our side who were called into that room. And I don't remember every single one who was there. I know my, my partner, Jen, was there. And I think our friend Robbie was there. Mm-hmm. And um, so we were all sort of in that nervous, like, what are they going to do to us pose? And and uh, you guys were great and said, you know, the, the point is not to make you the butt of the joke. And we're going to bring this guy in and you're going to watch his commercial. And then you're going to give your expert opinion. And um, and so, you know, we we did all of that. And then... <laughs> And, I, and then our, you also have to be nervous because you're there. Was your boss in the room as well? I don't well? think our bosses were in the oh, okay. room. No. All right. Okay. Um, but yeah, no. And I, I, so we were more nervous about like a TV camera. Like that was a very, sure. you know, in the late 90s, you never saw one of those in your room. You know, now everyone's got right. cameras everywhere. But um, anyway, so we were self-conscious and stuff. But uh, but you guys were very nice to us. And, um, and so it took a few... I don't know, a couple hours, maybe three hours. And I remember at one point, Conan said something to me. um, I can't remember the first thing he said to me that felt kind of like, wait, what's happening here? Is this guy flirting with me? (laughs) But he asked um, like where I'd gone to school. And I think it was when the cameras were not on. And right. all of a sudden, it was like we were sort of on a date in, in the middle right. of this room full of other people. And he was like, what did you study in school? And what was your thesis? I mean, we were having this full-on, like, first-day conversation out of nowhere. And literally every other person was looking at each other going, what? Should we go? What's going right, on? Right, right. Um, so then... But he could kind of fit it in under the guise of like, well, you know, I'm just trying to... Warm up the room and put everyone at ease That's right. by and I only had, talking to this one right, one woman. Right. And <laughs> I had this, I, I, I didn't know him. I didn't know, you know, I just like he's Well, like, I was gonna ask that. Did you because you said you knew the show was on TV? That's you right. It was yes. a, I didn't know that. <laughs> I had heard of but him. But you didn't I have any impressions of Conan before that. None. I had no idea if he was, you know, like what brand of celebrity are we talking about here? And so I was like, well, so if he is <laughs> I like what brand? Yeah, like are I'm I'm, you know, I'm the young blonde in the room and maybe that's all this is. He's just like this is the shit. Um I had no idea how seriously to take it. Um right. So, uh, and I felt kind of dumb, actually, for for taking it seriously at all. Because I, I was like, I, maybe he just does this every time he walks into a room and I'm, you know, the idiot who thinks that it has to do with me. So... Right, right, right. Oh, you mean after he was started... When we chat. Asking me a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Is that even yeah. flirting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. For us. I know, with cameras it's there. Super, yeah. and a, super hot, a, yeah. A sound guy and everyone's wearing mics. Talk about and he's thesis, interviewing you. literature, yep. No, I remember at the end, I think we were done. I don't know if we're out in the reception area or down or downstairs in the in lobby. The lobby, even. uh-huh. Yes, and you guys were chatting away and I I've been on a lot of remotes with him and that had never happened 
<laughs> Especially on a show day. I, I knew something. Yeah. Because right. oh, it was like, a we, show day. You know we've wrapped, right? Right. You can, yeah, exactly. You get to leave. Yeah, no, and, we did. We ran into each other in the lobby as I was going out to get lunch. And, uh, right. and I... You know, I didn't know anything about the way your days worked or anything. I was like, you want right. to co- come? You want to go get lunch? I mean, right. now I know he has never once in his life gone and gotten lunch on a work day, ever. So, <laughs> you know. No. Maybe. maybe. Wait, did later. he say yes to lunch? He did not. He, was, no. he, okay. he had to regretfully decline that offer. We did have a crazy conversation in which I, <laughs> I said... Um, I cannot believe, yeah, I said this to him I the first day we met, and I was um, 29 at the time. And I don't know how we got on this subject, but I swear to God, it's not as out of the blue as I'm making it sound. But I said, <laughs> my gynecologist has told me I need to have all of my babies out of my body by the time I'm 34. <laughs> so oh my literally, God. that sentence came out of my face, and he didn't run away, which says something about him. Yeah, know, good normally, or bad about him. Right. <laughs> that's kryptonite Yeah, for men. so, every, you know, somehow we were having some sort of subterranean discussion on a, on a profound level, um, or I was a crazy person and he just happened not to care, so. Or he was ready to settle down. I think he was getting ready. He's like, yeah. I've just been looking for... He got his marching orders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, well, Liza, so then did you go back to the office and talk to your coworkers about this? Yeah. I mean, did you tell people? Yeah, I didn't tell people, but the people who had been in the room literally came in my office and were like, what the fuck was that? And I said, <laughs> oh, so everyone sensed it. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It was weird. It was really, it was, yes, it was palpable. And, um, and I said to, uh, you know, the two people that I had to talk to about it, I was like, I feel like an idiot for, I, I can't take this seriously, right? Like he's on television. What, what? Right. Um, yeah, normally he's not, he's not it would a real be like, person. Right. Yeah. And I completely understand your perspective of, oh, this probably happens all the time and I'd just be the flavor yeah. of the week That's without right. because you didn't know him That's right. and know that that was not possible exactly. for him. Exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> yes. I I quickly learned that that was not his style, but uh but at that point I I didn't know. So so yeah, I talked about it and, and then um and then there was a follow-up to the remote a couple of weeks later or maybe a week later right well the the remote um the the second part is you guys presenting the commercial right so we put together like a an improved version of the commercial that we were pitching right. which was like a you know total fantasy we ripped footage that we could never you know whatever it was not a real right, commercial right, right. um and then you guys edited it edited it for us right i think i gave you oh, a yes, script oh yes i think we did and you made it which I was like, oh, this I like. Right. Now this very <laughs> nice guy right. named Mike Sweeney seems to be like my editor. And that I can get on board with. <laughs> we put it together. And yeah. then we came back, right? For... Yeah, you came back and you, you, you showed it to us so that we could... And him and Hilton. I think he came back to New York. I, yes, I, he came back to New York. Yeah. And so we showed him this ad that we had made. And he was like, that looks good. And probably would, you know, if you ever ran that ad, it would cost... $2 million for one <laughs> airing. But, but Conan was there for that too, right? He so, was. And then So after what happened? <laughs> anything happened that time? Because I don't remember anything. Oh, really? From you that don't remember time? him no. saying, now's the time in a re- at the end. Now's the time when we all go out for beers afterwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And you, lo- you looked at him and you said, what? And he said, yep, <laughs> you know how we always do. And the camera guys were like, what? <laughs> I for, did forget about you that. You did? And then we went to a bar, all of us. Oh, right. And we right. all, and you guys were all sitting there like, can we please leave? This is such a charade. Why do we have to be part of this? Well, we knew, yeah. Yeah, we right. We knew it was yes. going on, but right. I, so, yeah. I can't tell you what a testament this is to you. <laughs> I have to tell you, the idea of him on a, on a again, a show day, carving personal time out it just never no kidding it you mentioned your for anything you're ticking biological clock <laughs> all of it uh-huh i could have gone so wrong i'm horning in on his work time no i did everything yeah. wrong everything wrong no like uh, i have i re- do remember alarm bells just in terms of like this is totally upending the cart this is crazy it's happening i i and i'm i'm not the host i was like What's going to happen to the show today? Exactly. He's going out for a beer. He's lost and, and his even the mind. First time yeah. Talking in the lobby, I remember 
talking to the lobby, just thinking like, oh my God, this, he doesn't have time for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there's a moment in that section of the remote too that commenters on YouTube have found where he says your name, Liza. Uh-huh. And they think you're the only person uh-huh. whose name he says. Uh-huh. So that's, uh-huh. people have zeroed in on that, that's I funny. think, in hindsight. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's pretty accurate. I'm sure. Well, the, you know, those commenters might like to look at the raw footage because I believe I ruined 85% of what we shot because I kept laughing over, every, like, I would laugh at every single thing he said. Uh, and I ruined well, I everyone else's lives. I was curious about line. that because mm-hmm. the way they edit it, I mean, I don't know when the last time you watched the remote was. It's been a while. It's been a while. And you know, <laughs> you he's, ne- he's never watched it. He won't watch it. Oh, wow. Oh, he, wants, really? he wants to remember it instead, which like is that. sweet, but also like, are you afraid you're going to reconsider? Like, I don't know uh, what really at No, this he's point. probably just going to be embarrassed of it, that he Maybe. was... He says he prefers his memory to whatever yeah, the truth is, sure. which is it's fine. But it, it's pretty, I mean, uh, if you just watch the, foot, the, the remote, it's yeah. all very subtle. It's yes. only in hindsight. It's yes. very subtle, but yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. They edited it so that you are not laughing at him, mm-hmm. Liza. <laughs> You're just stone faced. I know. Yeah. And I was wondering if you really did find him funny in the. Oh my in the god! Moment. No, I was. It, I was obnoxious. I was absolutely obnoxious at how funny I found him. Yeah, I edited all that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm a terrible straight person, especially. <laughs> what for about him. the other people in the room? Were others laughing, or was it just yeah. you? Yeah, no, others were laughing, but I think I was loud. Is the problem. Other people might have been. I think a little it bit was the solution. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it did work for him. I think he didn't. Think he didn't did. mind <laughs> terribly. No. So I guess I'm assuming then after the the beers happened, the the beers with many onlookers, uh-huh. um, that you two exchanged information or somehow. Well, things continued not right away, which was oh. interesting. Um, yes, so. He said, do you guys want to come to the show to watch this whole remote air in front of an audience? And we said, yes, of it's course. It's a tradition. We always yeah. have the right, remote. Right, right, right. <laughs> so we what did. A smooth, what a smooth opera. Oh, my God. I know. You should have said, hey, it's on TV. Why would I <laughs> go all the way to the studio? Um, yeah. So we did. We went and we watched like from the green room or something. And, and then he came and said hello Afterwards, and I was wearing a baseball hat. I don't know why. And he walked <laughs> into the green room. I don't think you were there for this, Sweens. And he looked at me and he said, take that off. And I did. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 it was so weird. But anyway, um, and then he said, why did you do what I said? So, yeah, oh, I was, boy. we were off to the races. Yeah. Yeah, you really oh, are. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting the full show day treatment. Now, that was showtime. That was his show persona. Yeah, um, so he's, he's kind of wound up. He yeah, had to be on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, telling um, people to remove their hats. Yeah. <laughs> for no apparent reason. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's how he warms up for the show. Right, and then shitting on them when they do what he asks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, so that happened. And then, um, and then I had to go to L.A. for work. And cool. the thing, and it was super cool. And then it aired while we were out here. Um and then that was kind of it. That was like the end of our alliance. And there was no excuse anymore. And, right. and Sweeney, I don't know if you remember this, but I called you because I had your number. Right. And I said, this feels really dumb, but would you pass a note to him for me? Because I didn't know how to get him Aww. any communication. You know, do you remember? Of course I remember okay. this. Right. And yeah. I, I was just like, I thought it was adorable. I was like, sure, I'll pass the note. I, I think I charged you a reasonable fee. Uh-huh. <laughs> Guess I which I, I still owe you. you. Is it compounding <laughs> interest? <laughs> um, yeah, and so I just I just wrote a note saying like, you know, it was really nice talking to you. And if you ever want to continue the conversation, here's my number. By the way, he hates this part of the story. He hates this part of the story so much that he used to try and get me not to tell it. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, he's going to edit this, so. Yeah, well, I know, there I was, we go. It'll be lost to posterity. That's fine. Why does he Why does he hate this part of I the story? I think because I was so impatient, which I am. I'm very impatient and I can be a little bossy. And he didn't uh, like that I was, I was beating him to the 
manly punch. Well, that's oh. what I was gonna. I was gonna guess that he knows he should have been the one to do it, and he's embarrassed that he wasn't. Well, it wasn't that he was embarrassed so much as he was getting there, and okay. he was like, "Slow your roll." But I was like, "Dude, I, I get you know, that. I don't." He said, <laughs> "I said I didn't know if you would." I was about to change jobs. Um, right. And and I didn't. So you and and you know sometimes people didn't know how to spell my last name because it only had one L and I was like I, what if you couldn't find me and he said and there was no Facebook right yeah <laughs> well there may have been but I was not um, <laughs> but he said I have an entire department of people who do nothing but find things for to me hunt I you would down. have found you it's fine I was just like well whatever I asserted myself and I'm proud of right. that I remember I I. I brought in the note, you know, I just like, uh, you know, I didn't say anything. I said, here you go. <laughs> I think you were, you probably wrote something humorous or, or something that tickled him in the note. Cause he was like, uh, he's just like, she wrote me a great note. I don't know if it was great. Oh, yes. I think no, that might've been I remember the, that. I remember that. He was, he was just like, or <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it was no, that great, but, was, but I like that he was, liked it. He was, yes, he was, I just remember him being like really impressed. And I was like, wow, okay, this is, because I, you know, I, well, I'd been working there like, I don't know, four years, mm. but I'd been on a lot of remotes with him. Nothing right. like this had ever happened. Right. So right. It, it did stand out. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then it, and then he was, you guys were on hiatus for like two weeks or something. So it took a while still, even after that, he like went, his mom was having some health issues. He went home to Boston, whatever. So there was a little bit of a, a you know, an ellipse, well, an ellipsis of time after I sent the note. Well, and Oh, yeah. So were you just sure. biting your nails over uh, yeah, it? Yeah, I was sort of like, I may never hear from this person again. I didn't know. I could see, you know, like there's such a connection there. Him almost being afraid to to dive in. Cause, right. Did, right. I, you know, because it's a little scary, I yes. think, when you meet yeah. someone. And I with think, that intense connection. Absolutely. And especially yeah. when they're talking about childbirth. They've got a timeline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. He probably was trying to buy himself just a little bit more freedom. Right, right, right. Um, but but then when he finally did um, reach out to me, it was like, he, he called me at like 11 p.m. on a Tuesday or some crazy thing like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I... And Better we, than a Friday or Saturday. <laughs> Was he, did he say, I just want to make sure you're watching the show tonight? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. How hard did you laugh? Um, oh, did you feel like, I, I don't mean to interrupt the call and you story, but did you feel like in the meantime, like I better bone, I better little, start watching this guy's a show. Little. And you know and what happened? Like, yeah. So, so I was, and I was enjoying it. And then, and then we had our first and conversation. And did you like him more or less after that? <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's it's so different. Like, it's so different to enact, you know, encounter someone through their performance on television versus in person that it was almost right. um, adjacent. It like wasn't, it didn't really impact it either way. And, um, and when he finally called, we talked to like two in the morning. We were 30 blocks apart. I could literally almost see his apartment from mine. And right. we just talked for hours. And then that happened a few more times over the next few weeks. And it was actually really amazing. I was really glad we kind of had that almost pretend long distance relationship because I think it was it was really, really nice. But during that period, when I was watching his show, I found myself getting really resentful that I couldn't talk back to him, that I'm watching the show uh -huh. and he's communicating to me, but I couldn't participate and I had to stop watching. Uh, <laughs> I had that, so interesting. That's a good excuse. I know. <laughs> Fast, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> um, it was... It was too I, it wasn't complicated two ways, so I, from a communication yeah. standpoint. So <laughs> I'm no longer a viewer. No. Uh, <laughs> but that's probably better any like Well, I try to say that. I try to say, like, listen, if I was just like some right. you know, rabid fan of yours, your pers You're your right. public persona, that would be weird. And he's like, mm, I could handle it. Yeah. <laughs> He'd love it if I was a fan. You could have a few more tattoos of me totally. on you. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like every every step of this was really authentically yes. you being yourself and yeah. him being himself, and yeah. it just worked, which is yeah. so sweet. Yeah. No, it, it it was it was really sweet to kind of watch it just naturally unfold. So 
Well, I'm glad that you were there. And then I'm glad you were at the <laughs> wedding, as was Hilton. We invited. Oh, my God. Hilton. Oh, we I invited no Hilton way. to the wedding. And he In came. Seattle, Did he hometown. cut the cake with a chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been really good. Um, no, he was there with his wife and his kid, like his two-year-old mm. kid or one and a half-year-old kid. Anyway, it was very sweet that he came. Um, that is very he, sweet. No, that was a great wedding. It was, was a great, great wedding. Thank you. Um, have your kids ever seen the remote where the, you met their dad? They have. They watched it a few years ago for the first time. And that, that was fine. They really kind of didn't care. Were they care. like, cringe, mom? <laughs> no, they, they kind of didn't. I don't know. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with looking at my parents' wedding photos and pictures right. of them when they were dating. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's generational, if these kids are so used to everything being memorialized in, you know, photographic form that they right. don't realize it's, you know, rare or special or yeah. you lose a lot. I don't know. They don't, they're like, okay. But all, <laughs> also their dad's on TV every day. So it's Maybe. just like, uh, more, kind more from his show. Okay. Yeah. It happens to include you. Yeah. I don't know. It's a funny thing with kids where they're like, you're not at all exotic to them. You're the definition right. of not interesting. And so <laughs> why would they be more interested in you in a different format? They would right. not. So, But th but they, they could come around to that. Maybe. Like maybe 10 yeah, years from I now. All later of a sudden, on. Yes. Maybe. It'll hit them. Maybe. Yeah. When, yeah. Once they start going through similar things in their lives, they're probably like, oh my God, that yeah. The tape's crazy. They were people just like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or if that guy had not sawed his furniture up with a chainsaw, we might not exist. I know. Right. 